Hey gang, and welcome back for another video here on Joe Chem. Okay gang, so we're going to kind of go back into the sugar reaction state of mind. And in this video, we're talking all about oxidation. That's right, we've oxidized so many things in the past, so why not sugars? So there's really two reactions you're going to learn. And again, in my experience, these typically pop up and complete the reaction sections. And as you will see, we'll talk about them first. And then I have a few, you know, just little examples right after this that we'll do can work themselves into a concept question in a way. So you'll see what I mean. If we take a look here, we're going with our tried and true friend, D-glucose. So if we take a look right here, we you can see we have H2O and Br2 as well as nitric acid, water, and heat. Now, with you know this set of reagents, you know sometimes you might just see HNO3. Don't get thrown off if you're missing the water and the heat. However, you know how do these function? How do they work? What do they give us? So when you see H2 and Br2, I want you to think of this as more of a mild oxidation. And then when you see the HNO3 and the H2O and heat, I want you to think of this as an aggressive oxidation. Okay. Because what's going to happen is you're going to get a carboxylic acid. This will give you one and this will give you two. Here's what I mean. So this is only going to operate on your aldehyde, right? The thing that's kind of at a higher oxidative state. So the H2O and the Br2, you get a carboxylic acid. Only the top of your sugar gets oxidized. The bottom stays the same. You still have a CH2 OH and nothing happens to the backbone of your sugar, the stereocenters in between. Now, of course, I wrote CO2H, but remember, that's just an abbreviation for a carboxylic acid, so don't let that throw you. Now, on the other hand, if you go the nitric acid route, this is more aggressive. It's going to oxidize your top as well as your bottom. You're going to get a carboxyl carboxylic acid here carboxylic acid here. So you, you'll see the, the slight difference and why I said one's more aggressive than the other. Nitric acid goes for the kill, it goes for everything, whereas your H2O and Br2, let me just, <laughs> I'm talking and writing at the same time, I can't focus, so let me see. Let me just get this down and then I will, H, H, there we go. So like I said, this is more aggressive. It oxidizes the top and the bottom. You get a carboxylic acid on top and on bottom, but on the other hand, if you go the more mild route, it just oxidizes the top. So what I want to do, gang, is just, you know, I'm going to wipe this up, just give you, you know, maybe like a complete reaction question and uh, maybe like a concept question. We'll talk about them and then uh, we'll call this video a video. Okay, gang, let's do two quick examples and close this video out. So if you take a look at this first one, we have a complete the reagent question. And then in this bottom one, kind of like a complete the reaction question paired with a slight explanation. So if we take a look at this first one, right, we need to provide the how. How did this reaction occur? So if you take a look, right, if you see that that is what you are handed, just make sure you compare the top and bottom. So you can see we have aldehyde, alcohol, and over here we have carboxylic acid, but also alcohol. So this was a more mild oxidation. You don't have to reach for the nitric acid, right? We don't need to go, you don't, you don't have to wake up today and choose violence. You don't need to be aggressive on the oxidation front. We can just totally go with the Br2 and H2O approach. Now, if we look down here, so we can say that we start out optically active and there's no reason why we shouldn't, right? We have stereo centers, totally good to go. However, we have nitric acid, H2O, and heat, or you just nitric acid, but then we're optically inactive. So let's look at the product, right? I'm gonna draw that right here. We know we'll have carboxylic acids on top and on bottom. So then we'll go right, left, and then left, right, and maybe you're seeing it. You do need to reach back to some stereochemic knowledge that maybe you haven't accessed in a while, and maybe this will do it. When we do that, when we actually oxidize from top and bottom, that was, you know, it was the top and the bottom that was the only thing keeping us from having a plane of symmetry. So even though we have chiral centers in this molecule, remember, to be chiral, you need to have stereo, you know, you need to have um, one or more stereo centers, but you need to not have an internal plane of symmetry. This has an internal plane of symmetry, internal plane, 
and remember what that means when you have that. You are meso, and as a result, you are a chiral. So it makes sense that this structure is not optically active because it has this internal plane of symmetry, because it's meso, it isn't chiral overall. So it will not bend the plane of polarized light. Okay, gang, I hope if you were looking for anything on the oxidation front, this helped you out. There is a little bit more. Uh, I know I talk about this in another video when we talk about lengthening chains. I think I even do an example where there's, um, you know, like a chirality problem thing going on when you lengthen a chain and then oxidize. Uh, it's very similar to this, but make sure to check that out. And if you're watching from YouTube, thanks, you're the best. You should check out these videos on my website, joechem.io, where there are worksheets and solutions that are paired with the videos that are 100% free, so check that out. And if you're already on Joechem, well, then you're the best. No matter what, gang, I hope to see you all in the next video.